we can stop. <laughs> now we have to hear her. Well, hello, everyone. Um, it's really good to see uh, so many new names and faces and welcome to us, uh, the rest of us too. They were longtime members. Um, I'm Judy and uh, I don't know, some of you might not know me yet, <laughs> but um, I have been the president for the last uh, two years. I got the COVID years, uh, lucky me. So we've been doing all our meetings via Zoom and um, so just to, to give you a background of some of, the, some of you new folks, um, we uh, try and do the training once a year, but because of COVID, um, we have not done it um, in a couple of years. So, and we usually do it via lectures. Um, so we, you know, we've had it at the Powell House, we've had it at Christ Church, we've had it at the um, Philadelphia Museum, it, you know, all, all different kinds of places over the years. And um, before COVID even was a factor, I had decided that I wanted to try and do training um, via tour, tour, just the tours, okay? Because we're tour guides. And um, I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to really be able to um, see and interact with different tour leaders, different tour guides, because everyone is unique. Uh, we all do tours differently. And um, so I thought it was a really good opportunity uh, for people to be trained this way, not only go over the, you know, the history and the facts, but uh, be able to uh, participate with all different kinds of guides. So, and because of COVID, it all worked out um, really well. So what we have done in the past is um, we had our lecture series and then we would have this uh, tour guide uh, training techniques or essential things. And we would sit around and kind of go over the basics and talk about it. Um, but uh, someone had suggested to me, somebody who was on the handbook committee with me uh, suggested that maybe we should do that first thing. And I thought that was a really good idea. So that's what we're here tonight uh, to just kind of uh, go over. What I'll do is I'll, I'll just go over some of the basics that we have and then we can open it up uh, for people to ask questions or some of us who are pretty seasoned guides, we all have some stories we can tell, I'm sure. Um, I, I know I've had some doozies. Uh, so so what I'm going to uh, reference is um, it's in the handbook. Our new handbook now has a section, the very first section, and it's called the business of guiding. And um, I wrote this along with a committee. Um, Jim Murphy is, I think, somewhere on the call with us. He was on the committee with me. Um, and we put this together back in 2018. Um, and uh, it, we made it into our handbook now. And if you haven't gotten a handbook, um, I highly recommend it. There's just $25 just for the PDF version. Um, and uh, we'll go over this first part. And I'm going to try and share my screen now. So does everyone see effective tour guiding techniques? No? We're seeing your we, we, we see we see your list of uh, of files. <laughs> see my list of files. Yeah, it's a Windows screen. Hmm. Yep. Ah. It happens. Well, I'm gonna stop the share. Hmm. Wonder why it's not. You might have been sharing the, you know, another window. Uh, when you, when we tried it earlier, you were you were sharing the the actual content, but this was you were just sharing the uh, the list of files. You see it now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. So, um, just to take you through, this is a it's only a it's a short chapter in our handbook, and um, again, I'll try and show you a little bit about the contents 
this is the index. So we talk just about getting into the business and all, all the different facets of being a tour guide, all the different areas you can get into um, and where you fit into the guiding industry. Uh, we have a little section called your daily pack, what you should always have with you as a tour guide, which includes like, you know, a water bottle. I mean, pretty basic stuff, but it's always nice to have a reference. Um, and then just all a different section about uh, what every guide should know ahead of time. That's doing your research and preparing for the tour um, and so forth. So we're going to we're going to actually talk about this part right here, effective tour guiding techniques. But I just wanted to show you what else is in um, this little section of our handbook. And the other important things are I, I have attachments. There's four attachments. And this actually came, um, came up as an, a real issue with COVID um, because a lot of uh, tour guides, you know, uh, found, and then I'm talking with tour guides from all over the country, um, you know, they, they didn't get paid because they never had any kind of agreement um, for cancellations and things like that. So these attachments uh, kind of become more and more important to our industry. And again, these are just boilerplate attachments. Um, but just giving you ideas of uh, when you get a tour, um, there's, you know, an agreement for guide service, which is attachment A, your uh, checklist for uh, booking a job. Um, and then if you ever need to invoice a client, we, again, we have a boilerplate form there. And then if you have a medical emergency um, to, you know, that you have to report on. So again, just just some handy things to have if in fact uh, you ever need them. Again, all depending on, you know, what kind of business, who you work for and so forth, but it, it's a real handy guide. So we're gonna talk um, about this, the effective tour guiding techniques. And there's 14 points here, I'll go through them. And then, like I said, we'll, we'll open it up to uh, any discussion or any thoughts that you guys have. Now, I told Nick at the beginning, um, uh, he was our past president and the very, he got the very first one here, always be professional and wear proper attire. Remember, you only get one first impression. This was a, a line that I heard him say numerous times on different tours and I thought it's really important because it's true when you first meet your group boy that first impression does say it all so um you know it, it is nice to be professional and like I say wear proper attire be <laughs> be ready again something like Friday morning if you you know you've got to watch the weather um and make sure that you're you're prepared oh I'm sorry <clears throat> um, the second one is take special care if your tour includes anything um, on controversial subjects. Uh, this is really, again, important in the, the uh, climate that we live in these days with politics and religion. Um, it's very easy to kind of get on a tangent, but uh, realize that you have uh, people out there with all different kinds of backgrounds and opinions. So you always want to avoid uh, talking about that. Sometimes people even want to kind of, you know, provoke you or see where you stand and try and avoid that. <laughs> um, we're Philadelphia tour guides. So number three is promote Philadelphia. Um, we don't ever want to be negative. Um, and a good experience for your group um, definitely can mean a return trip. I've just had just in this past week, um, uh, some people have asked me for my card, my business cards, just because they've had such a good time with a group tour that I've had that they wanted to, you know, be able to know how to get in touch with me. Uh, so you always want to try and give them a good experience. Um, because you will get return business um, if you're good at what you do. Lots of it's this this business is all about uh, you know people recommending you. You you get to work with somebody else. Somebody else uses you, and it, it on and on and on it can go. Okay, um, my this is my big thing number four. I, I always it's their day. It's whoever you're you know you're guiding. 
you know, people have um, paid, you know, they're on holidays or uh, they're, you know, it's, but it's their time. And so many guides I know that I've experienced, not Philadelphia guides necessarily, but around, you know, when I've traveled is uh, guides can really get all involved with all the knowledge that they have, you know, and it's like showcasing their talent and they want to just talk about it. And you've got to be able to read your group and not everybody's into that. You know, you just have to, I have here, it's a subtle balance to understand your client's interests and in showcasing your talents. I mean, we all know a lot about Philadelphia after you guys take all these tours and study the handbook and take the exam and everything, you'll all know. But um, lots of times, you know, you got to listen to your clients. They might, they could, they might not care about all the different, you know, timelines and, and things, but they have something else specific that they do want to hear about. So number one um, is to be flexible as tour guides. As much as you might have your whole agenda laid out, your route laid out, you think you, and, but something happens. Um, and this, this happens a lot. So you have to be flexible and you can't let it get to you. You have to just take it in stride. Um, uh, so again, that goes on with uh, number five, your, your groups are on vacation, so have fun with it. And you have to be enthusiastic and passionate about the city. If it's like, you know, people can tell if, if you're out there and it's like, oh, one more tour I got to get through, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you don't ever want to relay that kind of um, image. Um, be, re be relaxed and confident as much as you can be. Confidence comes from knowing your stuff, knowing your subject matter, and, um, and, and be as relaxed as you can be. Uh, if you have time, some people are better at this than others. I, I work with a number of guides, um, and I, I call them schmoozers, because they really uh, kind of develop a rapport. You know, they, they find out who the lead person is, the lead teacher, or the person, you know, running the tour or um, getting the groups together. And um, they really can, can do that. Some people do that a lot better than others. Uh, I know I'm not, this isn't really my forte with, uh, you know, establishing rapport, but it does help uh, to introduce yourself, um, give them a little bit about your background, but again, don't overdo it and make it sound like, you know, I've, I've been doing this so long and I know all this stuff, but just, you know, tell them some fun facts about, about yourself. Um, and more importantly, you know, find out about them and, and what they, they want to uh, learn or, you know, what they're interested in. Big thing is timing, number eight, okay? Timing is everything, um, especially when we get into the heart of the season and um, trying to get into um, hall into the into the hall with tickets or through the Liberty Bell lines. Uh, so so many people come and all they want to do is see the Liberty Bell. Um, and we all know how long those lines uh, can be. Sometimes they go around the block. So you kind of have to. And this just comes from experience too. I can actually tell now. Well, pre-COVID, I should say. But depending on how long the line is at the bell, just how long, you know, it, it'll take you to get through security and whatnot. So you, you have to kind of learn that. Um, but it is important to be on time, especially if you have appointments to keep with um, museums and, and things like that. <clears throat> um, establishing eye contact uh, throughout the tour is important. Um, the first thing though I am guilty of, I, I have to wear, my eyes are very sensitive in the sun. So sometimes I do wear sunglasses and I know that's a big no-no for tour guides. So instead, if you can wear a hat, uh, that is better. They, you know, it is better to have people that see your, your eyes. Um, always face your group when you are talking. And if you can uh, stand uh, up a little bit higher, um, and always with your subject uh, behind you uh, so that they can see what you're talking about, basically. Okay. Again, this is all very, very basic stuff. You might think, what's she talking about? I know all this stuff. And you might, but 
you'd be surprised at how many people, um, I was on a tour once here in South Jersey and uh, the guy actually spoke to us from behind us. It, it was really, it was really weird. So <laughs> um, number 10 is to just speak clearly and loudly. Most of us have pretty loud voices, uh, some louder than others, but uh, you wanna always wait until everybody is assembled uh, before you speaking. This is always a challenge too with school groups or younger people, um, especially now with cell phones and, you know, to try and get, uh, if, you if you do school groups like I do, I do a lot of school groups, um, it can be challenging to kind of get their attention. Um, but uh, it's best to just kind of wait and, and hopefully, you know, they'll all finally look up and, <laughs> and hear what you have to say. Um, don't speak too quickly, especially if you have foreign visitors in your group. Um, uh, again, a lot of our phrases, uh, people, foreign visitors uh, will not understand. So you want to, you know, try avoid that. Again, not, that's kind of 10 and 11. You don't want to use technical vocabulary or architectural jargon. Now, I know there's um, probably some of you from uh, Preservation Alliance, but then that people, if people are on tour to learn more about the architecture and whatnot, then certainly you want to throw around some of those terms um, and explain to them though what they are. Um, there's nothing worse than some, again, trying to show off all that you know. Um, it can be very intimidated and, and really just not a good experience. Uh, number 12 here is your typical, I know you're, you know, you study for the exam, we have to know dates and names and whatnot, but that can be, again, pretty off-putting for people. And if you can throw a story in there, sometimes that is so much more effective than just uh, coming up with, you know, all the facts and the dates. So I always encourage people to uh, learn the stories about the people in Philadelphia or the buildings of Philadelphia. And, and, and just even if it's just something completely unique, somebody may not have heard it before, but people will, will, will remember that. Um, I always try and encourage and handle questions from the group. Um, re repeat questions to benefit the group. If somebody asks you something and people at the back maybe didn't hear it. Um, if you don't know the answer, oh geez, don't make anything up. Just be honest, say, and, and try and find out the answer. I mean, you know, Google's a wonderful thing. So I want a break or at a time, if you're walking somewhere, or whatever, maybe you can try and Google something or find out, but don't make something up. Um, I just heard um, <laughs> that uh, there was a ghost tour um, at, now I'm sure Tony, this isn't you, but at the Pal House the other night and um, we were listening and hearing that um, the guide was saying Thomas Jefferson met his wife at the Pal House, totally false. Um, and they, they were just, you know, just talking about all kinds of, of nonsense. So it, it's just the fact, just, don't don't make stuff up. I mean, it's 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 fun to embellish, especially on a ghost tour or something like that. But you don't want to uh, do anything completely wrong. Lots of times you'll get questions, um, and you intend to cover things later. So just ask that person, uh, you know, to get back to you, or you know, like you're going to cover it. And if it's if the question's not answered, then you know, tell them you'll get back to it. Um. And again, number 14 is just reiterating, stick to the facts and never, uh, and give accurate information. Um, never read from notes either. I, I'm a big one. I know a lot of people carry around notes. Uh, certainly if you're on a bus, if you're on a bus trip, say out to um, Lancaster and you're sitting down with the microphone, I've done that already to talk a little bit about the Amish and I don't, you know, expect to remember everything, so I'll bring notes with me that. But a walk, walking tours, you should never, ever be looking at your iPad or, or reading from notes. Um, that is just, uh, in my, again, in my opinion, I see it happening, but in my opinion, that's just not a really good 
uh, tour guide. If you're always like, I'm, you know, looking at your notes. I, I actually had a tour once where someone was reading from the iPad. I mean, like looking things up and I'm like, wow, that's, <laughs> um, people are paying you. So, um, so that's, that's basically what we have um, in the handbook. Uh, now, so um, I can go back and just, uh, let me see, just again showing you a little brief, uh, briefly about what the Business of Guiding um, talks about. It's, it's all about getting into the business, whether you're a volunteer or uh, part-time versus full-time whether you're going to own your own business or work for a company. Um, it just gives you all kinds of ideas of what you should do with getting involved with CPAs and lawyers um, and trying to get to the daily pack. Here we go. It guides daily pack. And again, this seems like really, really base, you know, basic stuff, uh, but you'd be surprised. Um, Lots of times I've gone out without something and it's, uh, you know, and you're like, oh boy, I forgot something. Um, always wear shoes, the good shoes, a hat, sunscreen, name tags help. You're all going to get a lanyard tomorrow, courtesy of APT. Um, so lanyards are, um, I love them. I mean, I know you can, we all can kind of look a little nerdy, but we have lanyards that your cell phone fits in it. Your ID can fit in it. Um, once you get your, you know, if you pass the exam and you're certified, you can have your APT membership card or whatnot. So it, that really kind of makes you look official. So that's nice. Um, a refillable water bottle, really important. Of course, your cell phone. Um, I find that a watch can be easier and a little bit more effective than constantly pulling out your phone to see what time it is. Um, umbrella, again, for Friday, we need umbrellas or a cheap poncho. Um, always have your itinerary with you, um, including if you're using a, the bus company and a name, cell phone numbers of everyone involved, including a tour company, uh, leaders, the bus driver, and so forth. So all in really important stuff to have. Um, a pen can help too. Uh, basic first aid, such as band-aids, tissues, uh, alcohol wipes, um, of course, any medications that you may need and a high energy snack uh, helps again, depending on how long your tour, um, your tours are or the kind of weather it is. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And we'll come back and see there's some. Yeah, so there uh, the chat function is um, available. If you got you guys can either raise your hand um, or unmute or whatever, or use the chat function. Um, so I have from Deirdre, uh, do you recommend using a small backpack for these items? Absolutely. Whatever, you know, whatever um, you feel comfortable with. I'm in colonial costume for the one company that I work for, and I have a, a big bag that I have, like, it's kind of a cross body bag, and there's, I can get so much in it that, um, you know, I lose stuff in it, actually, <laughs> uh, but, but again, I, I wear that lanyard, so I always um, have my cell phone, I can, I can hear it ding, so it's very helpful. Um, you know, and, and that kind of essential stuff is right there too. So you, it's on your body, but, um, so, <clears throat> so I was hoping that, you know, and Judy, us, Judy, Marianne yeah. raised her hand. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, Marianne. Um, so I just wanted to say that when I was starting as a guide, um, nobody told me that it would be good to have a, like a theme or a thread kind of running through my tours. And um, I was thinking about this, about this presentation today and what, what to talk about. And it happened that for my, I'm doing a training program for meditation 
And one of the things I watched for class yesterday was all about giving presentations. And some of the questions that the speaker was Jonathan Faust, if any of you follow Tara Brock or Jack Kornfield, um, he's Tara Brock's husband, but he, um, he had this list of questions that are really good when you're framing a talk that I think work could work really well for a tour. And I'm actually going to look at them and incorporate it more in my tour to make it more cohesive in my old city tour. So I wanted to um, share them with you. I think I'll put them in the chat and then I'll read them. And that way you guys can at least see them. Mm -hmm. So hold on one second here. Okay, well, while you're typing that up, um, Rich is saying caution guests to watch their footing on the uneven pavements and pay attention to traffic signals. So important, okay? Um, yeah, especially when you're walking around an old city, but anywhere in Philadelphia, um, you, you have to be um, really uh, cautious about uh, the pavements. Oh, and one thing I didn't mention um, is, uh, you know, I, <sighs> Nothing bothers me bothered me more than a, having a guide that was just would would go so fast taking you through the city, um, and I I do have it in in the tour guiding and I'm sorry I must have just like read right over it but you should never really go faster than your slowest uh, person if possible I mean some people you know are really slow but um, I know I know this happened to my husband and I when we were in London once and the tour guide in Oxford he just like took off and you know and it was really a horrible experience um, because my husband couldn't keep up and I'm trying to keep up with the guide but keep my eye on my husband and it was it was just awful so always be aware of your you know your group um, I, one time I had to leave someone actually at the bourse because she just couldn't keep up and she was embarrassed and she was, you know, happy to stay behind. So um, you just always want to be aware of what uh, your group can handle. Um, so from Nick, just a point about asking your group where they're from. Great idea for American groups, but European visible, vi I'm sorry, visitors will recall in anything that asks them for personal details. Um, <laughs> so. <clears throat> yeah, and I don't know why I'm not able, and you're not seeing that in the chat that I pasted, right? For some reason, no. it's, not, it's not letting me paste, but I can, do I, can I share my screen? Um, only Rick has to make you a co-host. Uh, he disabled. I will do time. that uh, right now. It'll just take a minute. Yeah. And Rick, did you have your um, hand up? I did. Um, and while Marianne's doing that, I just, uh, I, to me, the point you made earlier on reading the group, uh, to me, is, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, I will give the same tour very differently to two different groups, depending on their level of knowledge, their level of interest, their attention span, the, the sorts of things that they're, uh, they're interested in. So uh, I just think that part of it is, is really, really crucial. Right, right. Yeah, and every group is different. I mean, you know, so, so it is really important. And, and you can have, be having a day too that you're kind of like, you know, you'll feel like you have days when you are just spot on and, and then you might have an off day too. So you kind of have to read yourself too. And if you're having a, like a little difficulty with, with either like kind of getting some rapport with your group or, you know, you know, take a breath and, and just kind of, you know, take it down a notch and, and, you know, try, you know, start over kind of thing. Cause uh, you know, we all aren't, aren't on our best every day either, so. All right, so Marianne, you wanna? Yeah, so these are just qu suggested questions to ask before giving a talk. Why is this topic important? What am I most excited for the listener to get out of this? How do I want the listener to feel? What do I want the listener to remember? What is the call to action? What do I want to feel at the end? And what is weird, strange, scary, hard about this? You know, obviously people love the weird, strange, funnies, you know, scary stories. Um, and not that every question has to be answered for every 
tour that you're going to do, but I think they're good starting points to kind of figure out, you know, there's, I could literally talk for eight hours about stuff in Old City, right? And I only have maybe two hours, maybe three, maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So I really have to pick what I'm going to talk about, right? So this helps me or will help me in the past. I just pick what I like the most, but I think this will really help me kind of focus you know, what's the main theme of my tour? What do I really want to emphasize in the tour? And then answering these questions will help me pick the stories um, that are going to, and the sites that I want to show that are going to express that most, mm -hmm. you know, most effectively in the most interesting way. And again, looking at the group, you know, what, if you know anything about the group ahead of time, what they might be most interested in. So okay. I'll leave it up for like the next question or two, and then I'll take it down. So people want to copy them down. Rich, Rich DeLulo's hand, hand is up, Judy. Oh, okay. Hey, Rich. Oh, I don't hear you. You sound like Minnie Mouse, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh at you, but it, something's funny with your um, microphone or something. Can, can you put your comment in the chat, Rich? Yeah, can you put your comment in the chat and uh, we'll try and take you from there. <laughs> okay. So. So does anybody else have any, I mean, uh, you know, comments or questions or concerns? Um, I know when uh, I started this, I, I retired, just a little bit about me, uh, I retired from the Department of Defense uh, seven years ago. So um, I talk about switching gears. This is a, I went from sitting in front of a computer most of the day doing all kinds of analytical work to, uh, you know, standing in front of people. So, um, you know, you can do this. Um, I took the exam the first time, I thought just as a dry run, but I did wind up passing it. Um, so, you know, and then, you know, it's been, it's been a pretty good, uh, a lot of fun ever since. So, <laughs> oh, Rich, yeah, he's asking, why is it unique? This is probably for Nick, if he's still on. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry, my thing just went through. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying, ah! But Marianne, um, uh, Barry asked, uh, what is the call to action? What, 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 do you, what do you mean by that? So a call to action, so say in my meditation class, right? It might be, so, you know, maybe tomorrow you can try meditating for five minutes. So for a tour, we're not quite doing the same, but I like to ask, and I'll thank Rich DeLulo for this, um, but I like to ask at the end of my tour, you know, I talk about some of the founding fathers and their relationships to um, enslaved peoples and, you know, how they dealt with that. And I like to just get people, you know, like, what kind of a democracy do you want to have? You know, so when you're, I mean, not like, so when you're voting this year, you know, not that direct of a call to action, but just kind of getting, you know, what do you really want people to think? What do you want them to take away from the tour? Maybe you have a direct thing, like, you know, make sure you vote this year, especially if you have a group of schoolgirls, right, from a, a girls' school. It's really important. Women fought for the right to vote. Make sure when you guys are old enough, you vote. Get all the women you know in your family to vote. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you don't. But if you have anything that you want people to do, afterwards, that would be a call to action. And it could be simply like, think about this, or it could be something direct, like go vote. Um, that's the best, maybe people have other examples, that's the best I could think of right now. Okay. Um, so let me just answer a couple of these, uh, or try and answer them. Rich uh, was, uh, why is it unique to Europeans that they don't like to answer questions about their backgrounds? I don't know. Nick, you wanna answer that? Is Nick still on? I'm still on, I'm answering it in the chat, but basically it's uh, not necessarily unique to your appearance, but for change, I'm only talking about what I personally know. 
That's especially Germans are especially, they'll be offended if you ask them well, where you live, where you live or what you do for a living. To, a, to an American is, uh, you know, it's ridiculous, but that's uh, just, a, uh, just a heads up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so someone asked um, how long the exam is. The exam, um, I would, uh, about two hours. Um, it's a hundred questions. They're each worth a point. And then it's uh, another part where you identify a site um, and you, um, I, it's a picture and then you identify what it is and uh, where the, what it, what's its location and just any about three facts about it. Um, so, and that's four, we do four uh, pictures of that. So <laughs> I'm, I'm almost uh, finished the exam. Um, so it's, 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 I'm just, I've just updated it a little bit uh, from prior years. So uh, I would bet, I would bank on about like the two hours. Um, and the way we grade the exam, again, it's, um, it's 120 points altogether. Um, if you pass it with um, an 80 um, or above, we call you a certified guide. And if you get a score of 100 or more, that um, allows you to be what we call um, part of our master guide program, which uh, we, we're gonna have to work on in the future, but master guides, basically you had to work for a company. You had to have, first of all, you had to pass the exam with a hundred or more. And then you have to work for a company uh, for a number of years. Um, you have to give tours to um, a body, a, a group of people, like three people from either the board or membership or fellow master guides and kind of, uh, pass, you know, their comments and, and things like that. So, um, so that's, that's basically, uh, you know, I can tell you about the exam. Uh, Michael asks, I, he knows it will be coming historical material, um, but do you recommend any books? Well, so since you asked, Michael, <laughs> uh, again, in our handbook, we added a section that didn't exist before. And um, it's called further reference. And we expect this section of our handbook to constantly grow, okay? But what we've done is the, the people who worked on the handbook with me, um, I asked everyone to submit um, some of their, you know, the books that have helped them the most. Um, so we have, um, it's just a, a, a couple, uh, you know, front and back page of, uh, recommended books. Um, most of you, if you're going to be on George Boudreaux's tour on, I guess that's Friday, right? Friday morning. Um, don't, don't tell him this because it'll just go to his head. No, I'm just kidding. But um, he wrote Independence, A Guide to Historic Philadelphia. And that is like a Bible for me. I, I, I reference that um, again, as a, as a learning guide, I, I went to that a lot. And, uh, so that's a, that's a really good resource. But we do have um, all kinds of resources in our handbook, and like I said, we expect it to grow as as you guys you know say. Oh, I just read this book, and it really really was interesting about um, you know slavery or you know something something different other than just history too. Um, so. Let me see. Judy, I was just going to ask just to mm -hmm. clarify for people that for the exam, though, right, as far as I understand, all you really, the only resource you would need to study from is the handbook, right? There's handbook. nothing on the exam that's not in the handbook. Right, right. Okay. The handbook, this is the hard copy. Um, you can get the PDF version for $25. Everything 100% on the exam comes from the handbook. So um, we don't, you know, we don't throw anything else at you that you had to be on this one's tour or something like that. Okay. Um, Deidre asks, so what's a good icebreaker question you recommend? Ooh, I don't know. Somebody else want to take this one? <laughs> I usually, I, I was thinking specifically because of the comment um, with people who 
we don't want to offend them if we're if we ask a too personal question. So mm -hmm. what's an alternative kind of question to use? Mm -hmm. I I usually use, you know, where are you from? Um yeah. I, I don't go for much further than that, but um I haven't had much pushback even from Germans if you if you only leave it at that level. Yeah. I think I know in my um in the DEI training I'm doing that, you know, when when someone speaks with an accent in America, they they get a lot of times people saying to them like, "Where are you from? Where are you from?" And they're American, they're living in America, they're working in America, but they have an accent, and it it tends to really bother people. But I think as tour guides, um, I haven't found that that was a huge problem because I'm not asking because I think you don't fit in here or I think you are less than I am or something like that. I'm just genuinely curious, you know, where are you coming from? Because I've traveled a lot internationally and I lived overseas. So maybe I live there, maybe I know where you're from, maybe I've been there, you know, that kind of thing. So I think if you're, you know, use follow-up questions to show that you're genuinely just curious. And if they don't, you know, if somebody says to me, oh, I'm American, you know, then, okay, you know, I'll just say, where are you coming from? And, you know, maybe they'll say New York because that's where they were before they came to Philadelphia. That's fine. Then I just leave it at that. If they, you know, if, if they don't want to share more, mm -hmm. um, I like to say that Philadelphia is the birthplace of America, and then ask people why I might have said that, why they think I'm saying that, just to get them sort of talking about what they know about Philadelphia history. That's kind of my icebreaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And bef before we get to Shelley's uh, question, I see you have your hand up. Um, but I do love um, international uh, tours. I've done a lot of them and one of my some of my best experiences um, have been with the international groups. Um, in particular, I had a group from Sri Lanka that um, I didn't even want to do It was the second tour of the day for me I was exhausted and um, but I, I did it and by the end of the night, I, we were, you know, just close and it was just a wonderful experience for both of us. So remember that in that kind of situation you're an ambassador you know, for um, these people coming abroad. I mean, they they have possibly, you know, saved, had life savings, and this is like their big trip, and they may never return. And so you really have to have, you know, empathy and, and just listen to them, and it can be a really, really wonderful experience, um, even if it's just a couple hours. So, Shelly, your question. You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> oh, can you can hear me now, right? Yes, yes. Um, I guess because I've only been doing this since the spring. So I've only had really tourists from the United States. I haven't had that other experience. And I do find um, that people, I mean, that's sort of the icebreaker, you know, you know, where you're from. So if you have different groups that that kind of helps them kind of know just that much about each other. And if they've ever been to Philadelphia before. Um, mm -hmm. So I've never had anyone feel that, at least dealing with Americans, where asking where they're from would ever feel like too personal. Right? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. No. I know uh, this, uh, going back to that um, Sri Lanka group that I had a while back, um, they had just come from New York and they had a, a, a guide in New York that was from Brazil. And they were so, they said, not a great person, but they were so disappointed because they wanted somebody from New York to give them the tour. And when they found out that I was, you know, a Philadelphia girl and, uh, you know, they were just, that, that was like a big icebreaker too. Like, yeah, I was born and raised in Philadelphia. And I spent my whole career here. And, you know, so they, they wanted that, you know, they wanted that connection. Okay. Um, there is a question out on, let me see how it goes. Um, this is a toughie, and Marianne, I don't know if you want to take this one or if we want to, but Ned wants to know if you fill me in on the controversy that APT was having recently. Uh, it was an issue with the board and um, very 
simply, and Marianne, you can jump in, but um, we had uh, wanted to have a speed, or it was, we didn't even want, we, we suggested to have a speaker from the New Faith and Discovery Center um, and just, just to have a, a monthly meeting, a Zoom meeting or whatever, um, or an in-person meeting in the future with someone uh, representing uh, that new museum. And uh, so that was a that was turned out to be a problem with the board member that they did not want that to happen. So and and Judy, I guess I'd just put into a, a from my perspective, a broader context that um, you know everybody in the organization, I think feels the need to diversify, uh, include more people, more stories. Um, I think there are some people who kind of took this as an opportunity to say, let's do it faster. And so we, we assigned, we created uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, subcommittee that is working through how the organization can, uh, uh, can reach out, can uh, diversify uh, more quickly than we have been. And so, you know, I think that is a, a positive movement in the direction that, that we all want to go. But I think the, the controversy kind of comes back to how fast uh, some people wanted to go versus others. And, and so this committee is intended to uh, kind of get us, get us to the right place. Well, and one other thing is that as volunteers, we're all volunteers and we all feel like we should be able to speak openly and freely um, about, you know, things. And um, this was not the case. Okay. This was not the case that we were um, not able to do that. So, um, and under no, no circumstances should any volunteer um, member ever feel like they've been, you know, harassed or, or cut off um, just from, you know, not being able to say what they, they felt. Okay, so communicate. I would add that what I think is really a positive outcome of the whole situation, besides the DEI committee, well, in part with the DEI committee, is that um, we have an opportunity to really create an organization in which all voices are heard and all voices are safe to express their opinions. And you know, we don't have to all agree with each other, but we can all express our opinions respectfully and civilly and, and safely. And I think that's really important in our society now, lacking in our society now to a large extent, but I think possible. And I think we can start with our organization. So that's my goal in working through all of this anyway. And I think uh, the other board members as well. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I can speak for all of you, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, so getting back, uh, Nick had a really good uh, point. He said about foreign visitors. Um, they, of course they don't have the same, uh, you know, history and background that, that we have. Um, and his example is he started talking about the Revolutionary War and someone asked, who are we fighting? So, <laughs> so again, this gets back to knowing your audience um, and understanding that, yeah, like you, you get a group of uh, French students or, you know, anywhere from, uh, you know, all over the world. Um, and even the younger students, you know, they, they don't know a lot of things these days that, uh, you know, where we take for granted. So uh, you do have to kind of uh, talk in simple language and as if they really don't know um, as much. Uh, Jim, you have your hand up. Yeah, Judy, it's not only foreign visitors. There was a study <laughs> done a few years ago at um, uh, one of the Texas universities. And the radio, the local radio station went out and asked people who won the Revolutionary War and who was in it. And the people didn't know. Then they asked who was in the Civil War and who won it. And, the, and it was Texas Tech that did this, their, their, TV, their student TV uh, station. And many people didn't know who was in either war. So it's not just 
people from out of out of the U.S. I mean, half, I think you could get down the street tonight and half of the people wouldn't know who won which of those wars. Right, right. It, it reminds me of that uh, Jimmy Kimmel section, you know, when he goes out on the streets of L.A. and asks mm -hmm. like simple questions and people, you know, don't even know who like the vice president, is, whatever. Um, so, yeah, we do have to be mindful of the fact that we're all history nerds for the most part. We love that. We love telling the story of our, you know, of our city, which, and, and we, and so you do have to be mindful of that, that lots and lots of people just don't know anything about history. And, you know, and sometimes you'll get tours, tourists that still don't want to know about history. They're here for, you know, other things. That's so, right. Um, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say, Exactly what I was going to say. Sometimes I have groups very young and from France, and they are more interested to see Rocky than to go to see Liberty Bell, you know. So mm -hmm. quite interesting. So and it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have fun, you know. Oh, Rick, you're 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 dab at it again. Rick, yeah, Rich, Rich. You're, you're still speaking chipmunk. Yeah. <laughs> well, Rich had a comment in the chat that you can always ask your guests on tour how they feel about Philadelphia since they, you know, how they feel about it since they've arrived. Right. I don't know if that's what you were gonna say, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, um, with foreign visitors, especially, it's like they're usually blown away. And again, this is up to the tour guide, too, to, to show. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. usually they, you know, so I many times, you know, Philadelphia, we're a pit stop between New York and Washington. And they only give us like a two hour, really like a pit stop. And they don't realize. Um, so it, it, when you have that hour and a half or two hours um, to show, you know, people things. And then they're like, oh my gosh, you know, why, why aren't we here? <laughs> and I've had tours, you know, there are three days just in Philadelphia. So, you know, you want to encourage people that there's, there is a whole lot more than just, you know, the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall. I, I know, Judy, one thing that I share with guests on my tour, I'm, I'm Jim, I work with the uh, Philadelphia sightseeing tour. So the red double decker buses that go right, around them. Right, I, right. I let folks know that um, when we're, especially when we're on Independence Mall, I point out there's Independence Hall, there's the Liberty Bell right here on the very corner of this modest home is the first quote unquote White House where Washington and John Adams lived while they were presidents. Um, to just kind of tie it all back together, I'll tell them it was in 2015 that Philadelphia was named the very first world heritage city in America. Right, exactly. There's only exactly, one other right. world heritage city in America and that's San Antonio, Texas, just right, to kind right. of try to bring that home for people. Right, right. And, and that's a good segue. Speaking of San Antonio, we are going to have our National Federation of Tourist Guide meeting there next January. It's been postponed from this January mm -hmm. nice. to 2023. So I'll put in the plug right now for the National Federation. It's a fun, that's how this whole business of guiding started. That chapter that I, I you know, went over that was uh, basically a presentation from a CPA fella uh, when uh, we had the conference in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, so you get all kinds of really good, good things, um, you know, information. You get to interact with guides from um, all over the country. Um, from associations like ours so I'll just nice. put in that little plug okay Nick you're happy to see Nick says he's Nick Svetkovic NFTGA so he's even got it there behind his name <laughs> well, I, have, <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have nine weeks left That's nine nice. weeks left in the on the board but anyway they are we are part of that organization uh, the Association of Philadelphia Tour Guides uh, we are part of that national association so um, and like I said, so, you know, it's, it's a really good, good, good thing to be part of. If anyone's ever wanted to go to San Antonio, put it on your calendar for next January. <laughs> uh, Judy, one, one thing is uh, you don't have to wait to go to San Antonio to network with other tour guides. 
there's an NFTGA Facebook group that's closed just for NFTGA members. Yeah. So you might, you yeah. might want to go there. There's a lot of information spread. There. Right. And we are going to have a little mini kind of program in January, right, Nick? For oh yeah, like I'm a little sure. conference. I, so you'll no, all get sure. a taste of it. And I'll announce that, or my uh, the next president will be announcing that, um, you know, for January. So, Annie, did you have your um, hand up again, or you are you're muted, Annie? You have to unmute yourself. I was going to ask. I was going to ask you. Are we going to have a Christmas celebration? Or? We, I well, the board decided that we've come this far um, safely, and I think uh, we're going to, you know, just have elections online, and uh, and probably not um, have a December get together in person. Ho hopefully with COVID is, is truly behind us, it looks like it's going that way, then maybe we'll start meetings again, in-person meetings in January. But I know there's still a lot of people that are very cautious about getting together in small spaces. Um, we are gonna have the exam in December at, at Mimi's, which is, um, I always call it Mimi's, it's what, whatever that's called. Um, Philadelphia Gourmet Steaks at 114 Market Street. <laughs> thank you. Philadelphia Gourmet Steaks. You know, it's where where the, some of the tours are um, meeting from uh, tomorrow or yeah, tomorrow and um, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we um, we will be having the exam there, probably um, in the downstairs part of it, uh, depending on how many people are taking the exam. But we can spread out, you know, safely there. So. Okay, so I think in the new year, hopefully we'll be able to meet again in person. Yeah. Walt, do you have your, no, no? Okay. Um, I just, I think- So I thought, another thing I like to do, yeah. I don't know if I'd call it an icebreaker, but to just kind of get the group make it, I like to make it more interactive and ask a lot of questions. I also taught for a while. So I have that kind of, you know, trying to get engagement from the audience. Um, but I like to ask questions and whoever gets it right, I used to high five, now I elbow them, um, but give them a little elbow. And then it's kind of like, hey, Canada got that one right. Or, you know, New Mexico got that one right. And kind of play them off each other to see who gets, who gets the most points. Not that I really keep score, but just to kind of make it fun and more engaging and see, cause it's, you know, it's amazing. And I'll have school groups with chaperones there or parents there or teachers and there, and I'll be like wanting the kids to, or even in my public groups, right? There'll be kids and the families and the parents are answering the questions. Yeah. I'm like, I want yeah. asking yeah. the kids, yeah. but people love to have the right answer and answer questions. So mm -hmm. I like to, you know, use that and get them, get them engaged. Yeah. Yeah, if you have a really small group, like I've had, I've done families already where you drive, you know, drive them around and you can even do like, you know, little goodie bags of just what's Philly, you know, soft pretzels and tasty cakes and peanut chews and things like that. And they really, <laughs> but I've done that already uh, for, you know, families from the West Coast and whatnot. So you are all... not gluten free. They're not, yeah. <laughs> Family's not gluten free. It wouldn't work no. for me to get any of those prizes. <laughs> so, well, I always remember a friend of mine who came from Southern California uh, to a meeting that I was having. It was his first time in Philadelphia. And you know how they sell oranges at the end of the um, expressway entrances over in California? Well, we sell soft pretzels, but he'd never saw anything like that. And he shows up to the meeting and he says, I want to know what, what are those big, like, things that they're that they're selling at the end of the of the you know and I, I I was like I don't know what you're talking about he says they look like a big like loaf of bread or something what is <laughs> oh it's soft pretzel <laughs> so anyway um well I hope again I uh, part of this training is all about um experiencing different guides too um and their techniques um some there's a few guides that are 
uh, doing more than one tour. So if you, I would def definitely encourage you to like, you know, switch off and, and try and with nine tours, you can get nine different, um, you know, guides. Uh, of course, they're all going to be talking about different things, but um, just how you present yourself and, and how you, you know, kind of work the crowd, if you will, or, you know, uh, do a tour uh, can, is a real learning process too, because we all have our own unique way of interacting with um, our groups. So that's hopefully you'll enjoy that and the weather will not be too bad. Barry, did you have a question or? Um, how do the, tomorrow the tours start, how do they work? Do you just show up and choose which tour you'll go on or is there a sign up or how's that work? Yeah, the, every tour, um, well, tomorrow we start, the first tour is at the Constitution. We'll start from the Constitution Center. There's gonna be two guides there because our group is about 40 people. So you're gonna divide up into uh, two groups of about 20. And um, Rick will be, signed. Rick and his, me, whoever he's, he's uh, engaged in helping him, they'll be, checking your names off so that we know yeah, yeah we, have a, we have it we will have a checklist um and people will check in and uh then we'll divide the group into uh into the two guides and then they'll take off so mm -hmm. uh it'll just and they'll be probably especially with old city they'll be staggered one one group will probably leave like five or ten minutes and then the other group will be behind because it's basically the same route um so yeah, and then we've given um, an hour between tours so that you'll have time to get something to eat, take a restroom break, that kind of thing. And we've tried to position the start and stop uh, tours so that there is like some kind of facility around where you can get, you know, have a break. Thank you. Mm hmm so, um, by the way, the, the, the exam um, is, and once you've paid for it once, if you don't pass it and you want to take it again, you can free of charge. So if anyone, you know, what does want to like, just see how you're going to do or see what it's like, you know, you can, you can do that. And uh, we won't, you know, we won't, we don't publish scores or we don't ever do anything like that. So, um, <laughs> but not, not too many people like don't pass it, I would say, but it is, it is a challenging exam. I will say you do have to study for it. Yeah. But it is just all in the handbook. So. <laughs> okay. So. Marian um, suggested that maybe um, everyone could introduce themselves briefly before we, we sign off for the night. Um, I, I see we've lost about 10 people already, <laughs> and that's fine, but um, I don't know. I, I think everybody sees people different ways, though, when they're screened, so maybe I'll- Why don't you just, yeah, I'll call just do people. it. Yeah, so Jim, do you want to, Jim Murphy, you want to start? Um, sure. I've been a guide, I think, since I've been on the board, or I was on the board around 2016. I think I've been a member since 2012, 2011. And it's been a great experience. I've learned an enormous amount and I highly recommend it. Hi, Mary Ann. Uh, I'm Mary Ann, I'm on the board. Um, I've been a tour guide for nine years now. And uh, I work for free tours by foot mostly. I also have my own company. And I've worked for all different companies that are out there, but probably four or five different companies. So. Um, yeah, happy to see so many new faces and the and the former faces. Hi. And I guess I should let people know too. I work for American Heritage um, for the most part um, in cost, and that's when I uh, do the costuming and I work. I do a lot of student groups. I'm also the lead docent at the uh, Powell House, and I work for a number of other companies um, whenever whenever they ask me to. So, uh, Rick. Sure. Um, I'm Rick Hyman. Uh, I'm the guy who's been sending you emails um, <laughs> coordinating this. Um, and uh, I've been a guide for about three years. I do uh, some of the historic Germantown houses and I do some old city tours with uh, the Philly Tour Hub. Um, 
and yeah, I'm a, I'm a member of the board. Uh, Barry, you wanna? Uh, my name is Barry Kaufman. I am a novice in terms of guiding. Um, I have enjoyed history for a long time and particularly the colonial and revolutionary periods. And uh, I'm looking forward to learning and perhaps dipping my feet into the area of touring. Great, great. Uh, Dawn Bryant. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm Dawn. I am a Washington, D.C. and Alexandria tour guide for the most part. I live down there. I drove up today after giving a tour, a uh, Lincoln assassination tour. Um, I work for a couple different student group companies, and I've been uh, offered the opportunity to do some guiding in Philadelphia um, for some multi-day tours. And I just wanted to be sure that... Um, I knew what I was doing. I wanted to do Philadelphia justice. And uh, also as a, especially as an Alexandria tour guide, but as DC as well, I just feel like Philadelphia's history is so um, beautifully connected to our history down there that um, I, I, I know that being a, having more knowledge of Philadelphia is gonna make me a better DC and Alexandria guide in addition to, um, allowing me to highlight Philadelphia in the way that it deserves when I do have groups up here. Great, thank you. Alexander, one of my favorite cities. I was, I've been down there a lot. That was my headquarters was down in Fort Belvoir. Um, Pam? Pam Covey? Hi. Yeah. Yes, hi. Um, I'm new to APT and uh, I'm a docent at Hill Physic House on 4th mm -hmm. Street. Um, I just retired in April, um, and I'm looking to, well, to get more active with physic and, and to explore the opportunities in touring because I just love Philly and all my friends are always talking or complaining about my famous running tour of Philadelphia when they come to visit. I drag them around to every possible site I can. <laughs> Great. Um, I, this might take a while, so I'll just like let everyone, maybe if you want to introduce yourself, um, you know, I don't want to put anybody on, on the spot and I don't want to keep people here, but well, we'll keep, we'll keep doing it. But, you know, if you have to drop off, I, I understand it. So Alyssa, you're next on my screen. Alyssa Peasy. Hi, um, my name is Alyssa. Um, so I... I studied art history in school, um, but I, I recently have some experience tour guiding in a place called Historic Deerfield um, in Massachusetts. And now that I'm back home, um, just looking for some opportunities to keep doing that. Um, so I um, am hoping to volunteer with the Preservation Alliance, but um, APT sounds like a great organization too. So um, hopefully I'll be a little more involved with that too. Um, thanks so much for hosting this. Great, thank you. Uh, Carol. Hi, yes. Hi. Uh, hi, thank you for all your help, uh, Judy, and also Rick and uh, Bob. Um, I'm uh, retired and I've been a guide at the Philadelphia Museum and the Rodin, Rodin Museum yeah. for 10 years. I uh, love architecture, so I'm hoping to pass this test so that I can, <laughs> so that I can volunteer uh, for the Preservation Alliance and their walking tours that are have a lot of you know architectural mm -hmm. themes. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just uh, I really feel grateful to have this opportunity to to learn and to um, to qualify. And it, it sounds like you're a great organization, and I'm really glad to be starting a new adventure. <laughs> great, great, well, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Louis Crespo? You have to unmute. She may have left. Okay. Um, is it uh, Nissen Isakov? Well, wow, that's pretty good, yeah. Oh, Nissen good. <laughs> um, so I'm originally from South Africa. Hence, my accent is not South Philly. Uh, <laughs> I hope mine isn't either. 
people ask where I'm from, I say South Philly. And uh, <laughs> you know, we've been here for 35 years. Um, Philadelphia purely by accident. It was a business opportunity. I'm sort of retired and um, moved to the city uh, three years ago, lived uh, across the road from Independence Hall in an historic building uh, with a beautiful mural. Um, and I just love taking people around the city. And the reason I'm taking this course is because I just want to learn more about uh, the city itself. So that's yeah, the... great. And, and uh, I do want to point out to um, all of you that a lot of our members are not even guides. They just join us because they love history. We do have a speaker um, every month that is usually very interesting. We try and get, you know, really good speakers. We try and do tours um, with each other. And uh, again, so, uh, you know, no pressure here that we're all guides or we're all going to be working, you know, whatever. Lots of people just join us because they love history. We have the love of the city. So, um, Okay, Jim D. Uh, yes, good evening, everyone. Um, I've been in the hospitality tourism uh, industry for quite a number of years. Um, in, in Philadelphia, I worked at a local hotel where I was promoting the city to tour groups to bring them into the city. So I've always had a passion with uh, promoting whatever city I lived in. I'm originally from Boston, but I've been in Philly for over 15 years. Uh, since May, I've been doing some volunteer work at the Hill Physics House um, mm. and am exploring some opportunities to see where I might want to go from here. I'm kind of in a transition situation with what I'm going to do, um, but I've always had an avid interest in travel and tourism and, and especially uh, being a guide, tour guide in whatever destination or area I've lived in. So, Great, great. Uh, Jim H. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that's me, Jim that's Holston, you, Jim. right? Okay, okay, cool. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm Jim. Um, I'm originally from Scranton, but I spent the previous 14 years living in uh, between San Diego and uh, Tijuana, and uh, I actually got my start as a tour guide in Tijuana for Americans. So um, and then I reached out to Philadelphia Sightseeing Tours and said, you know, mm -hmm. I could be your bilingual tour guide, and they're like, this would be great. So. I've been working with the company now for the last two months and I'm a big history nerd. Um, so my days off are just watching, I've watched pretty much every video on YouTube about Philly's history yeah. in both English and Spanish. Um, and then on my weekends, I like to go to the different museums and such now here in Philly. And um, I'm actually working on finishing my very first book, uh, which I expect to be out in January. It's about the practice of ambidexterity among some of history's greatest geniuses. And wow. one of the major ones I'm, I'm really trying to get as most as much information on as I can is Ben Franklin. So if there's anyone in the group that over the course of these number of days when we're out on tours, if you know anything about this, please let me know, um, particularly the handedness of Benjamin Franklin. If anyone knows of any kind of documents or things that they've ever seen or heard, and it's again, that can sound completely random, but I know I'm around other history nerds here. If you know anything about that, please let me know. I'm, I'm just really excited to take these tours. That's great. That's great. And you know, you are, it's, it's great to have uh, a Spanish speaking guide, mm. um, uh, multi languages are su in such need. I mean, I know Annie's looking for a French guide right now to help her. Um, I think as far as I know, Annie's our only French speaking guide. So mm -hmm. always a big need for uh, multi languages. Mm -hmm. Um, is it, I'm going to probably mispronounce your name. Is it Fage or Fage? Fega, but I respond okay. to anything that's in the neighborhood. I always okay. say I respond to uh, anything that's in the neighborhood or even hey to our guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm coming up on my eighth year in tourism. And uh, I, I apologize for the background noise. My house is insane right now. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I, I went to ITMI in 2013 and did the whole tour director thing. I worked for World Strides and Bright Spark and, you know, et cetera, um, doing the DC student tour circuit. Um, and then the pandemic happened. And I discovered that sleeping in my own bed is pretty neat. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so I pivoted to being um, the tours manager and development person for um, Philadelphia Sightseeing Tours, so big red buses. Um, great, great. Yeah, I'm here. Great. And I do apologize. I know ITMI is having their sessions the same time as our training this uh, weekend. We don't need to apologize. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I know, but I mean, a few people couldn't make our training because they had already, you know, committed to ITMI. So, uh, Walt, Walt Van Winkle, love that name. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, just woke me up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, hi, I've, uh, uh, I'm a, actually a New Yorker, you know, as you can tell by my name there, Van Winkle. But I've been in Philadelphia now for 35 over 35 years and absolutely love the, not only the city, the atmosphere here, the friendliness, the openness, the neighborhoodiness, but, uh, uh, but the history is fantastic. It's not just the colonial history, but even beyond, like I'm really getting into now the 19th century history mm. and all that. But I spent two and a half years as uh, a full-time guide at the Masonic Temple. So I've known, and I'm into the art, that's my other thing. I really love the art and architecture. I was a docent at Carpenter's Hall and St. Peter's uh, Episcopal Church. Mm. And uh, my main interests are in uh, not only architecture, preservation of architecture, but also Philadelphia's social and cultural history, and uh, especially restaurants and bars. Since my uh, wife is a chef and got very involved in the restaurant scene here, and uh, would like to. Uh, I've been work, I've, before the pandemic, I was starting to work out a, a sort of a tour that would incorporate all those interests, believe it or not. Try to squeeze in Philadelphia social history, bars, restaurants, and, you know, it all, it, you know in, a, in a very coherent way. Believe, but try to make it go here. <laughs> great, great. Um, Eric, Eric Stout, is it? That's right, uh, Judy, yeah. Um, I've been a uh, volunteer tour guide for over 25 years or so, and uh, just recently uh, rejoined APT. Uh, I was a good friend of Ed Major when Ed was at the Powhouse yeah. and yeah. also Sally, so I, I got to know Ed real well, which is a real treasure. Um, right now, I'm trying to help out Graham Park uh, as a volunteer, and I also help out Penny Packer Mills when I can and Hope Lodge. So I'm kind of on the periphery of the city right now. Uh, other than Alfred Zally. I'll, I'm trying to be at Alfred Zally uh, this December for the uh, Deck the Alley. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. great. Much like it for a hobby. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Um, Mike, Mike W, is it? <laughs> I'm, yeah, you have to unmute. Are you referring to me? Yeah. Oh, okay. My no, last no, no, oh, no, not Mike Morris. Mike. <laughs> Mike W, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Wardy. Uh, <laughs> first, uh, I I retired a couple of years ago. Joined uh, APT right before COVID. Uh, on a dare from my my children, I used to take my kids every year down to Center City Fourth of July, make them go on those bus tours, double deck <laughs> buses. And I said, when I retire, I'm going to do that. So when I did retire, I had to do it. So I did it, uh, did it for a year and a half, loved it right before COVID. As I said, I'm in awe of, of what you guys do. My hope, uh, if I'm not watching grandchildren, would be to maybe develop like an Irish tour. Oh, uh, that would be interesting. Yeah. I don't really see that too much. I mean, I love all Philadelphia history, but... Um, I would like to do something like that or even volunteer to have some kind of like an Irish tour, something mm-hmm. around the, um, you know, St. Joe, St. Mary's area or some, mm-hmm. some kind of walking tour around there. Uh, for extra points for your test, um, <laughs> that's only that I would give this. Uh, does anybody know where, I was born in Philadelphia at the Hospital for Diseases of the Stomach. Oh my goodness. Does anybody know where that was at? No. Okay. That, that was at, uh, I guess it's a park now. It's at the uh, 17th and Wallace. Wow. So I think that's uh, <laughs> Will Smith's park or something that he had. In the show. But anyway, life in Philadelphia. And, and, and since I'm one here, let me just say 
I got the handbook and for you people who worked on that, truly thanks. I mean, if you're not even a tour guide, just to have all that knowledge and information in this book, and it's a treasure to go back and, and look at. So thanks. Great, that's nice to hear. We worked hard on it. A lot of it had already been done <laughs> previously, but we just kind of reorganized it and, and uh, you know, edited and added. And so it, it, it is, we are pretty proud of it. No, it's great. Thanks. Great. Um, Evie. I became a tour guide because Although I'm from Philadelphia, I hadn't lived here for 35 years. I was in various cities and I thought I didn't know anything about Philadelphia. So it's time to learn to be a tour guide and find out something. So um, I do a few tours here and there for mural arts. Um, Pre-COVID, I was dressing up in a costume for Centipede and giving tours, but that hasn't happened lately. And I do regional tours uh, out of town to New England or Alexandria or this and that. And mm -hmm. I want to know if Jim himself is ambidextrous. <laughs> um, I actually am. I can, um, yeah, I grew up right handed. This happens to be my notebook right here. I don't know if anybody can mm. yeah. see that right there. But yeah, it's all, uh, it's, I, yeah, it's lefty mirror. So um, yeah, it's something you can you can teach. So I've been practicing for about the last ten years. So yeah, I, I can tell you more about it. You know, whenever after this, um, <laughs> obviously I'm writing a book about it, so I can I can of course say a lot about it. And I just want to say for the other Jim, Jim D, he did indeed um, welcome a group that I brought to Philadelphia when we stayed at the hotel when he was in charge. Great, great. Thanks. Um, Rich, if you still sound like Minnie Mouse, I can't um, have you. <laughs> if you try, and, are you are you going to say? Yeah, your your mic no, is man. bad. He, he wrote he wrote in the chat. Yeah, but mm. okay, but yeah, Rich is a member. Um, he uh, organized the mural tour for us. Uh, unfortunately, I could not go on it, but I heard great things about it. So thanks, Rich, for all your work that you've done with APT. Uh, Charlie? Yeah, uh, Charlie Kruger, uh, retired, uh, been a uh, um, volunteer in park with the National uh, Independence National Historic Park, uh, a little volunteer work for Preservation Alliance, uh, four years with uh, uh, Philadelphia Tour Guides, uh, and a member of the handbook committee along with yeah. Judy. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and looking forward to uh, the tours this weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Ralph Morano. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all. Uh, I'm new to APT, but I've been a volunteer tour guide with the Preservation Alliance for about four years. Uh, I do three different uh, tours for them. Uh, I intended to, to become certified through APT in the past. In fact, I, I bought the last handbook, the 2017 version, <laughs> which I have, but I never got around to taking the test. So I'm looking forward to um, all the tours and learning even more about the city and uh, finally getting that certification. Great, great. Bruce? Oh, you're talking to me. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm hi, Bruce. Bruce. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, I stumbled upon being a tour guide just with this one season under my belt with uh, the hop one, hop off red bus, uh, buses sightseeing Philadelphia after a very unsuccessful career of flinging groceries at Trader Joe's locally. <laughs> but I, I do have background in the tourism industry. I worked for two different cruise lines for five years. Oh, nice. And I've lived abroad and taught English in Thailand. I also, unfortunately, lived in California for many years with a career in public relations. And I'm, I'm so happy. I moved back to Philadelphia four years ago and I took a little break from Trader Joe's and decided I wanted to get back into the tourism industry. Got a job right away doing the hop on hop off buses and I've done it this season. I absolutely love it. I'm looking forward to being able to pick up as much information to be a sponge the next three or four days and getting as <laughs> much information as I get. And, and um, I love it. It's great being back in Philadelphia and, and talking to people about fresh pretzels and, and the ready. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, yes. Next is uh, Ned. You have to unmute, 
yourself, Ned. Okay. Okay, there you go. Um, I'm Ned. Uh, in my misspent youth, I hitchhiked across Europe, ended up in Israel and the, and the Middle East. And uh, <clears throat> after my long accounting career, I decided I wanted to be a tour guide. So I signed on with Tours by Locals. I've been doing that for a couple of years. And I started my own business called First Person Tours because my namesake was the first non-Indian born in Philadelphia, Edward Drinker. So that's sort of the, the, where my tour starts off and I go into a lot of family history. So, so you're dr a drinker, right? Yes. Are you are you a drinker from the Henry Drinker? And oh yes. Oh my gosh. So I That's wonderful. I, I go into that in great great detail. Oh my gosh! I want a private tour. I want the whole thing. <laughs> my um my stepdaughters were delivered by a drinker. That's my dad. That really? Was my dad. Oh my god! They delivered my stepdaughters. Okay, we'll have to talk. <laughs> Um, by the way, uh, one of one of the wonderful things that I read was Elizabeth Drinker's diary. So if you're into that 18th century, wanting to know, I mean, I I, I love that that uh, diary. She's my fourth great grandmother. Oh my gosh, that oh. is so interesting. We're going to have some good tours and good talks between Irish and drinkers and yeah, all kinds of Franklin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, Michael Morris. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael. My background is Jewish history, and previously I worked for the Jewish Historical Society of Greater Washington in Washington, D.C. I led many tours of downtown D.C. Uh, mostly, but also Alexandria, Virginia, and the Jewish history in Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, and then through March 2020, I worked at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in New York City. Um, Philadelphia is a city where all, all eight of my great grandparents immigrated to and my grandparents and parents were born and raised. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to learning more about the city with everyone. Great, great. Welcome. Lena. You have to unmute Lena. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lena and um, when I retired from the real job. Uh, I became a uh, tour guide with uh, Centipede Tour, so I'm one of the costume guides that walks around the old city. I lead predominantly uh, student tours, and um, I'm a lifelong Philadelphian, and I absolutely love 10-year-olds. They are the best ever. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to getting back on the, you know, on tour. Yep. yep. Yeah, oh, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for the kind words about the handbook. Um, <laughs> it took us, it took us, took us about two seasons to get it all put together. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Lena. Um, Pierre Magali August. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Oh. I'm, all my family here. I don't know why, but I'm Magali, and uh, I'm French, as you will guess with my accent. So uh, I was a tour guide in France for 10 years uh, before coming here in Philadelphia for my husband's job. Uh, it's been three years now. I took care of my family and now I'm ready to get back into business. So I'm really looking forward to uh, the tours tomorrow and to meeting Annie. Yes, yes. Annie needs you on this on the 17th. You already have a job if you can, you know, really... <laughs> It's awesome. I mean, I, I, I did not expect that, but it is awesome. So really, <laughs> I, I will get in touch with her. Great. That's great. Well, welcome. Thank you. And uh, let me see. Uh, David, David Kruger. Hi, everybody. I've been around APT for a few years. I've kind of disappeared during the pandemic, as maybe some of you have. But um, I currently, I teach at Temple University and I, I run the Dialogue Institute. We have uh, tours that specifically specialize in featuring uh, religious diversity and pluralism and talking about issues of race, talking about demo the origins of, de of democracy. Um, so we're actually looking to kind of pull a team of folks together who are interested in those kinds of topics and themes. We typically have hosted 
international groups from around the world uh, through a program we run through the U.S. State Department. But we're looking to branch out into reaching the general public and even, you know, working with uh, high school groups and really facilitating dialogue about uh, the very contested ways that people talk about the past and uh, drawing on how the past uh, kind of informs and frames the way we talk about our current state of affairs. So nice to be here. Thank you. Um, I, Vanessa, did I say your name right? Um, yes. <laughs> well, to be honest, it's, it's Ivanessa. Because Ivanessa? I'm his, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's totally okay. I'm so used to the English pronunciation by now. <laughs> um, so actually, I might in the future, you know, try to see if I can be a part of these tours that Dave was just speaking about with the Dialogue Institute. I'm an intern right now. Mm -hmm. And my area of expertise or that I'm unfolding through my PhD is in religion. And so trying to continue to help flesh out the rich historical, um, you know, context of, of religion here in the city and, and all the different, you know, uh, communities that we have and how that's been growing and evolving too uh, with a lot of the immigration shifts and changes. So it was great to meet everyone. And um, thank you for having this space for us. Yeah. Great, and you picked the right city with religion, right? We've got yeah. William Penn's idea. We have uh, we have it all here. Yes. <laughs> um, Luz Crespo, I know I asked before. I don't know if you're still there or not there. I don't hear it. Marilyn Rodriguez. Yes. Hi. Good evening. I'm here. Let me show hi. my. Hi. I to be rude when I'm talking. <laughs> okay. Um. I am um, a resident from Berks County, but I live in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I am um, an education director for an organization called Taller Puerto Riqueño. I'm not sure if anybody in the call knows it. We are predominantly all Puerto Rican, Hispanic. And um, our area is lax tourism. So tourism kind of fell in my lap. I've been living in my community for more than 35 years. So it was recommended that I sit in this uh, meeting tonight to see how tours are given. Um, and listening to you all, uh, apparently I am doing it right. <laughs> so I am looking forward to purchasing the book. I don't plan to get certified anytime soon, but um, um, I know my community well, and I find that the Latino community is not representative in the tours. So that's where I kind of come in. And myself and a group of people that we have a lot of nonprofits came together and we formed this, uh, I want to call it a coalition, not coalition, but I don't know what's another word for it. Anyway. Uh, there's a five nine profits came together. We're gonna we discuss about our community. We speak really passionate about community how it's changed and growing there and diversify. And I speak about a lot of what uh, the business merchants are doing in the neighborhoods. So that's our tourism, but also we have a lot of rich murals in our neighborhoods. So the other part about this is by educating other people to become members to get the tours. So we're educating our community residents to do this part. Right. That's right. what I'm doing now, and I'm listening to you guys. Again, thank you all, because I am not a history buff. So keep it going. <laughs> Looking forward to buying the book. By any chance, can you guys put the link in the in the chat or send me an email so I can get that? Because I don't know how we get the book. <laughs> sure. it's, it's actually out on our website um, under the APT store. So um, it's uh, our website is Philly Guides. OK dot org okay and and then there's an apt store um when you get out to that website so everything is is out there on the store i do want to add one more thing our building we've been around for 45 years we have an archives it's all latino base if you guys want to do any research on latino culture we are the institution great great all right i think i have one person left uh christine if you're still there, Christine. Yeah. I am still here. Hi. I have chosen not to turn on my camera this evening. That's fine. Uh, I'm a native Philadelphian. I belong to the Athenaeum. And I also worship at uh, Gloria Day Church, which okay. is one of the historic churches in Philadelphia. Um, although my, my training is technical, I recently retired from... Uh, work and I've often hosted people from other countries and given them tours of Philadelphia, informal tours of Philadelphia, which is how I 
came about uh, coming here. I've also benefited from having people take me around their hometowns, be it Shanghai or uh, Colmar and the Alsace or whatever. So I, I've traveled to a lot of different countries mm-hmm. and have benefited from locals taking me around to see their, their country through their eyes. That's great. One of the wonderful things is, uh, you know, we just, we have such a, a diverse group, uh, a different, we have, we, we're looking for even more diversity, but uh, say having, uh, you know, more and more people with so many different backgrounds and interests is uh, really uh, just so fundamental to our group. Um, so I, I want to welcome you all. Thanks for uh, sticking with it, those of you who did, um, and uh, introducing ourselves. And I, we all better get a good night's sleep. Um, <laughs> uh, Judy, I just want to make one, um, one little sure. plug as we keep sure. mentioning the, the handbook. Mm-hmm. For twenty five dollars, it's it. You can get the handbook, um, a link to the like a passcode on the website for the online version, and then you can download it or you can read it online. But that way, it's like an eternal um, access. I don't know if eternal for, forever access to the handbook. So anytime it gets updated, you can always go online, and whatever most updated version we have will be the version that's online. And we really encourage. You know, those of you who want to add chapters for neighborhoods that aren't included or different, um, you know, groups in the city that aren't included or history or people or places or architecture, whatever you think is missing, please, you know, write it up and and submit it to the board to be included because we really want this to be the organization's handbook, not just a small committee that makes it, but everyone can really participate and contribute to it to make it a really inclusive handbook. So that's the goal of it. Right, right. And if you're like me, old, and you want like to, to have notes in the margin, we do have the it for sale as well in, in a hard copy. Um, so if you don't have access, uh, you know, to a printer or you just don't like reading all that stuff online, we we can provide you with a hard copy for a little bit uh, more money. And that would be updated as well, but the online version, like, will that guarantee be, you know, updated? So. All right, um, so I, I hope I, I don't think I missed anybody. Please holler if I did. I think I got everybody. And um, hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow morning. All right, be well. Thank Take you. Care. Awesome, thanks, Judy. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you all tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, see guys. you tomorrow.